Guys, I'm looking at a ream unit running here. We have our Copeland compliance scroll, a little repair tag when I put a shear switch in there earlier on this year. And what we're talking about now is discharge superheat. Now we know there's been superheat on the suction line coming back where the gas in the evaporator boils off and the gas takes on more heat that goes beyond the change of state point, meaning if the gas boils off at 50 degrees and it comes back 70, it's got 20 additional degrees of heat, which are 20 degrees of superheat. So the same thing happens when the refrigerant comes back through the scroll compressor here. We have a discharge line with discharge superheat. It heats it beyond the point of saturation. And then it cools back down in the condenser, becomes liquid again. But it starts out a little bit superheated. So let's take a look and see what temperature we got. Right now, let me turn my light on. We have 169 degrees. It's going to continue to rise. If we look inside there, let me expand it out there. We have about 300 pounds. And if we look on the R22 scale, we're about 125 or so. So 125. As you see, we have a temperature of 176. And we have our almost at the 300 pounds are running a little bit hot, a little bit low on air, maybe on the inside, and we're saturation points around right below 130. So we got around almost 50 degrees of superheat, which is a lot. And if you look on here, discharge superheat will kind of correspond with suction superheat. So we have a high one of one, we have a high one of the other. We got 50 pounds, we have a temperature right below freezing right around 25 we come over here to our gauges we're running 72 so we're 50 degrees of superheat which is not really good so we might have to try to increase the air speed there or I don't really think we have a restriction uh, the system's run fine for years more likely it's uh, maybe a dirty filter in there we'll go check on that make sure the filter squared away but as you can see, the discharge superheat coming up the line must be cooled to become condensed liquid refrigerant. The higher the discharge temperature, the higher the superheat, the less refrigerant in the coil, the less likely it is to be able to condense under pressure with the, with the air blowing across it from the outdoor fan. So they all kind of go together, but discharge superheat is just not thought of as much, but it's just as important as anything else.